Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you an excellent option in case you are looking for great sounding active noise cancelling over ear headphones with a sleek design for under 100 bucks. Hold on a second, does such a thing even exist? Well now it does and it's called the One More Sonoflow. When I first opened up the box I got a bit confused as I was not expecting such a premium feel from a set of headphones that comes in just under $100 or euros. And I certainly was not expecting the design to share as many traits with the older Sony WH-1000XM3 or 4 as the Sonoflow does. From the carry case to the padding on the headband it feels like I have one of those popular Sony cans in my hand. And that's a good compliment given how much more expensive all the 1000X series headphones are, even the older ones. But focusing on the actual details of the case, it is not only handsome, but it is also very well built with quality materials all around. Opening it up reveals the headphones themselves, which lay flat inside the case. Both ear cups can be fully folded up, making the Sonoflow a relatively compact travel companion. We can find two cables tucked in a little pocket, one is a 2.5 to 3.5 mm audio cable and there is also a USB-C to USB-A charging cable. Onto the headphones themselves the design is modern and sleek. The official literature refers to the color of the headphones as black, however it's anything but black in my opinion. It's more like a gunmetal finish and I like it a lot. The Sonoflow is mostly made from plastic, but the headband is metal which gives it great flexibility and durability, but the fit is only snug enough to keep the headphones in place when sitting or strolling around casually. I found the clamping force to be just a tad short of being able to handle anything more intense, such as running or working out. The plentiful padding on the headband is soft, which makes wearing the headphones extremely comfortable for even hours on end. The low weight of around 250 grams can also contribute to that comfort in the long run. The oval-shaped ear cups are spacious enough for my ears, but if you have bigger ears you might find the cups a bit limiting in terms of their size. The padding around the ears is quite generous. It's also soft and it can breathe relatively well, so sweating might only be an issue in hot conditions. The faux leather cover has a nice touch to it, but it feels so thin that I'm not sure how long it will last. The pads are also not replaceable, so only time will tell if my concerns regarding its longevity have any merit. The yokes and the hinges are also made from plastic and I can hear some creaky squeaky noises here and there even when I turn my head around or my jaw moves when talking or chewing. So even though the general design is pretty cool and comfy, in spite of all the similarities you should not expect a Sony level of build quality as one more obviously had to cut some corners to keep the price down. However, when compared to the Soundcore Life Q35 for example, the overall experience is similar in terms of comfort and fit. Both headbands have roughly the same amount of padding, but the ear pads are ever so slightly thicker on the Q35. The build quality might be a step above the Sonoflow, but the Q35 is still more expensive than the Sonoflow, even a year after its release, so that's somewhat expected again. And why do I not compare the Sonoflow to the more recent Space Q45 you may ask? Well, I've got two reasons, maybe three. One, the Q45 comes in at a 50% higher price point, while you can get the Q35 for much less as of making this video, and that fact makes it a better match to the Sonoflow from a cost perspective. Second, the Q35 is also a very close match to the Sonoflow in terms of features. And third, I don't even have the 45s, so yeah, you are not the only one on a tight budget. And here is where I have to tell you that I got the Sonoflow headphones from the manufacturer for this test, but no money exchanged hands and I'm completely free to say whatever I want to say to you about the product. But moving on to the battery department, I reckon this is an area where the engineering team didn't want to cut any corners. We can get an extremely long single charge playtime of 70 hours with the ANC turned off, but even if we use noise cancelling all the time, the headphones can still last up to 50 hours. Add to that the 5 minutes quick charge feature, which can give you up to 5 hours of use and you get an industry leading performance regardless of price. 
It's kind of hard to test and confirm these numbers in real life, but I'm pretty sure the one more headphones can last a full week of all day use at work, for example. That's unless you use the LDAC codec and let's say the multipoint connection a lot, because that can have a significant impact on the battery life, but that applies to all headphones and it's not specific to the one more Sonoflow. And since I brought up multipoint and LDAC, let's talk about connection a little. So we get a cost-effective Bluetooth 5.0 compatible chip on board with support for SBC, AAC and LDAC. And as far as audio codecs go, LDAC is one of the best options if you want good resolution in your sound, hence the high-res audio badge on the box. LDAC eats up the battery a lot faster, it can affect your available wireless range and it's only available on Android but it is on board nonetheless. But regardless of your codec choice, the connection will be solid. I found pairing easy to all sorts of source devices and I had not experienced any signal dropouts during the last couple of weeks of testing. Whether I was using Android or iOS, I had no lip sync issues either and casual gaming is also okay with the Sonoflow. As I said, multipoint is supported and you can use it along with the LDAC codec too. Switching media playback between the two connected devices doesn't happen automatically, but with incoming phone calls the switch is smooth and automatic, so at the end of the day multipoint works mostly as intended. And while we talk about connection, I have to mention that the minute you plug in the audio cable, the headphones will turn off and as a consequence you cannot use the ANC feature in wired mode. And now here is a quick audio test using the 5 mic array on the One More Sonoflow headphones. Based on this test, you can expect great clarity during a phone call in a quiet environment. As soon as there is some surrounding noise, the ENC algorithm kicks in, which does a decent job with filtering out the background chatter, and my voice retains most of its clarity during the process. And for a final test, I'm outside on a windy day, standing next to a busy road. So these are pretty much the worst conditions for any microphone test, yet I still believe that the one more Sonoflow headphones can deliver usable results. But let me know what you think about the audio quality in the comments down below. Onto the controls, we get a few physical buttons on the right ear cup. No touch sensitive controls and no buttons on the left hand side either. The layout is pretty plain and simple, and using the controls only has a minor learning curve. We got a power on off slash play pause button on the front, an ANC mode button and a pair of volume rockers which also act as track controls on the back. You can also activate your voice assistant and answer or hang up phone calls using the power button on the front. The physical controls do their job just fine, however the buttons might feel a little cheap compared to those on higher end models, but let's say the Soundcore Live Q35 has similarly plasticky and clicky sounding buttons. There are no smart sensors inside the cups, so we don't have auto play pose. But we get the One More Smartphone app, which packs some handy features and it's available for both Android and iOS. On the main page of the app we can find the three different ambient modes such as ANC, pass-through and off. On Android there is an LDAC switch, but due to the lack of support on iOS you won't find this option on your iPhone. But you will find the recently updated sound options menu on both platforms, which now does not only have 12 carefully tuned presets, but it also offers a 10 band manual equalizer with the option to create and save 3 different custom sound profiles. We also get firmware upgrades, quick guides and suiting ASMR sounds and you can find the multipoint switch inside the settings menu under experimental features. The app works well, the UI is clean and easy to use and you can find pretty much all the features there are in this price range. Now, onto the QuietMax AI Active Noise Cancellation, it does a remarkable job at drowning out noises such as airplane cabin noise. And I mention airplane cabin noise specifically because I was traveling a lot with the One More Sonoflow and I found it very satisfying in terms of taming that constant hum. 
I also got a chance to A-B test the Sonoflow with a pair of Sony WH-1000XM4s, and I have to say that there are only two areas where the XM4s have a clear advantage. One is the more effective passive isolation, which can contribute big time to what the ANC can do on any headphones, or in the Sonoflow's case, can hinder its performance a little. And two, random higher pitch noises, such as human chatter, are fairly more attenuated on the XM4. Other than that, the Sonoflow performed admirably, no matter the huge price difference. Of course, we don't get as many fine-tuning options in the app as with the Sony, but the sheer noise-canceling performance is mostly comparable. The Soundcore Q35 is also close in general ANC performance, but again, those higher frequencies are blocked out more effectively by the Q35. The pass-through mode on the Sonoflow is ok, but there is an above average amount of hiss present in this mode, and the headphones make the surrounding noises sound a bit thin. The Q35 have a more muted transparency mode with more bass, and the XM4 sounds more natural. Another quick comparison I did was to the Sennheiser HD450, and I have to say that the one more Sonoflow easily outperformed it in all scenarios. True, the HD450 has never been famous for its ANC, but the SE version I have at hand still costs twice as much as the Sonoflow, which only confirms how much one more has raised the bar when it comes to noise cancelling in relatively affordable headphones. My only gripe with the headphones here is the rather harsh wind noise in pass-through mode and the lack of wind noise reduction mode in the app. And in case you were wondering how the 40mm DLC drivers can sound, it's a cut above what you would expect for the money. Or should I say a diamond cut above, because DLC actually stands for diamond-like carbon. But horrible puns aside, these headphones can sound really great. We get a warm and smooth yet detailed sound with a powerful enough bass, a rich and forward mid-range, and a clear yet slightly tamed treble. The sound is not the most open or the most sparkly as a result, but that only makes long listening sessions more comfortable, as ear fatigue is not an issue. Using these headphones, we get a decently wide sound stage, along with the capability of painting a precise image. Bass has a good punch, but it's not overdone, which gives room for the mid-range to be fully articulated and present. Instruments have a true-to-life sound, and vocals can step forward when they are called for. There is a great level of clarity across the whole frequency range, especially when the LDAC codec is in use. We might have to give up some of the finest higher-end detail when switching to AAC, but that just shows how much better resolution the LDAC codec can deliver thanks to its higher bitrate. But regardless of the codec situation, the sound strikes a nice overall balance, and it's tuned to suit most musical genres well. And let's not forget that with the most recent update, now we get the option to manually tailor the sound to our taste using the 10-band equalizer in the smartphone app. One last thing to be aware of is that the active noise cancelling has a rather significant effect on the sound of the headphones. I did my testing with ANC turned off for the most part, but when it's activated, the bass gets a bit of a boost, taking away some of the clarity in the lower mid-range. When we switch to transparency mode, quite the opposite happens as we lose some of that bottom-end energy and we are left with a less powerful sound. And to give you a quick comparison, the Soundcore Live Q35 delivers a bass with more extension and heft, it also has a more extended high-end, while there is a slight dip in the mid-range. It's a rather sculpted sound and sort of a more popular tuning, I guess, with this V-shaped character. The sound has better dynamics and the volume can also go slightly higher. But depending on your taste, both headphones can be quite enjoyable to listen to, and again there are the fairly similar EQ settings in both smartphone apps, which can help with fine-tuning the sound of either of the cans. And to conclude this review, I have to say that one more has nailed it again with their first over-ear noise-cancelling headphones. The Sonoflow comes in at an affordable price point, yet it packs a long list of features such as LDAC, multipoint, ANC and the Word class battery life. It sounds great, it looks sleek and it feels comfortable too. 
And as you could see, I only compared the one more cans to competition from a slightly higher price brackets, but the one more Sonoflow easily managed to hold its own, both in terms of specifications and general performance. And that tells a lot about how great of a value you get with these headphones for under $100. And this is the end of my review. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you want to watch similar content in the future. Your comments are welcome as always. Thanks for watching. See you next time.